All the day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory, Rosie the Riveter. This song was titled Rosie the Riveter and created and produced by Red Evans and John Jacob Loeb. Hello, my name is Samantha Biel, and today I'm going to be informing you of Rosie the Riveter. The creation of Rosie the Riveter was a pivotal moment in U.S. history for women. This is when women were allowed to work on the home front. I have chosen this topic because through the years, I've done extensive research concerning women's contributions during World War II specifically. The three main points that I'll be covering today is the history, symbol, and impact. So after the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th of 1941, men were called to the line of duty. This had left thousands of jobs unoccupied, especially in the factories. The need for factory out output and munitions had soared. The U.S. government began to use campaigning and propaganda to try to entice women to come fill these jobs and demands. In 1943, Norman Rockwell, this man here, created the most popular imagery of Rosie the Riveter. She was depicted as a brawny, robust woman, as you will see here. Norman Rockwell's version of Rosie the Riveter had appeared on the cover of the Post in May of 1943. There were three million copies that had circulated throughout America. This enticed one out of every four women to come work in the factories. That was an astounding ratio in 1945. To learn more about that, you can read Beyond Rosie the Riveter by Donna Knapp. Rosie the Riveter had symbolized strength, humility, and dedication. She'd become the face of all working women during World War II. In 1942, J. Howard Miller was hired by Westinghouse Company's War Production Coordinating Committee to create the infamous We Can Do It posters. In the poster that you see here, You will see a woman flexing her bicep, her hair pulled back in a bandana, and the sleeve of her utility shirt rolled up. Just as an example. These posters not only had persuaded women to come work inside the factories, but it also had boosted the morale of women already working these jobs. They were tiring and laboring, and women just needed the confidence boost. Historians believe that Rosie's, Rosie the Riveter is the most iconic American symbol of all time. She had impacted the lives of women during World War II by opening the workforce door. Women began to have dignity and pride in their work. And after World War II, most women did not go back to working inside their homes. She had influenced women of later generations as well. In 1970s, when the women's rights had emerged, Rosie's imagery was called upon for campaigning. Women fought, and they continue to fight, for women's civil rights and equality. To learn more about this, you can read Rosie the Riveter Revisited, Women, the War, and Social Change by Sherna Gluck. Once again, my name is Samantha Fiel, and I have informed you of Rosie the Riveter's history, symbol, and impact. I'd like to leave you with this quote by Sybil Lewis, a Lockheed Riveter. You came out to California, put on your pants, and took your lunch pail to a man's job. This was the beginning of women feeling like they can do something more. Questions? Questions? Um, what's one of your favorite things about her specifically? Or most so, interesting? So what I was just asked by Carly is what I find most interesting thing about Rosie. The most thing interesting thing I find about Rosie is her impact on women as a whole. 
she not only represented the women inside the factories, but women that were working inside their homes and in the factories and in, you know, during the war, they were going overseas. It influenced women to become something more. That's all the time I have questions for today. If you have any more, please see me after class and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.